call to order. Roll call, please. Here. Do I hear a motion for the approval of the, of the agenda? So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The prayer this afternoon will be given by Councilman McBride. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your blessings and the opportunity to come and to serve the citizens of Clinton and to serve you. And I pray now for your blessings upon this meeting. I pray for your wisdom and knowledge. Father, your word says that if we lack knowledge and we ask for it, that you'll give it to us in abundance. To God, I pray for the employees of this city. I pray as they do their task each and every day that you would watch over and protect them and their families. Thank you for the management and the staff here at the city and how you have blessed us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Jim. Do I hear a motion for, for the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated September 25th, 2023? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we'll recognize any visitors, citizens with praises or, or concerns. Any praises or this, this is his kind. <laughs> and you shall in just a moment. Uh, Mayor and honorable uh, city council members, thank you so much for allowing us to have the opportunity to come before you to to be able to express not only our gratitude but uh, gentlemen sitting next or sitting over here to the my left um, for an event that obviously he wasn't looking forward to and. Thankfully, can't remember, um, but day in, day out, um, all throughout Anderson County, but definitely in the, the city of Clinton, um, we get calls uh, on 911. And many times, those calls are not what I would call a true emergency, but to that person, they are. Um, but quite often, a true emergency does exist. And I, um, I feel very proud of the service that we receive in Clinton from our fire department our, and our police department uh, when they answer the call um, very quickly, um, immediately, and effectively. Um, it's something to be very proud of in, in this city. Uh, so we wanted to take the time to recognize for something that does not routinely happen um, when somebody goes into cardiac arrest, as did occur on the date um, for Mr. Howard here on October 1st, um, he experienced cardiac arrest. And in this instance, you're, you're technically not alive. Your heart is not pumping the blood to keep you alive. Um, it was recognized quickly and immediately by his family. They called 911 immediately. His own daughter started CPR. You know, when it comes to somebody in cardiac arrest, there's a clear chain of survival. The first is early recognition. The second is early and effective CPR and early defibrillation. Those are the three defining moments that will determine whether you have a positive or negative outcome. Mr. Howard got the, uh, the first two in very quick, uh, concise, effective measures, but then followed up there at least shortly thereafter by the Clinton Police Department and Clinton Fire Department, and then our EMS personnel arriving thereafter to continue that care getting him to the hospital who finished that care to get this gentleman that he's he's here with us today you know folks this is this is impressive this is something to be proud of um, so we wanted to take the time and although it's great to recognize staff and i'm sure these guys will say it's even it, the best prize is to get to talk to this gentleman and to see the fruits of their labor uh, but we do want to take the time to recognize them before you all, before their department heads, but more importantly, before the patient and the citizens of Clinton. So if I could have 
firefighter Sean McGlone. Not here. I won't have him come up. We will get him later. Greg Parton. Scott Brazier. <laughs> Captain James Blakeney. <laughs> Officer Dustin Campbell. What I handed to each one of these individuals is what we hand out in our department. It is a CPR safe pin. Now within my department, gentlemen, this is something that can don the uniform, which we are quite selective on what can. That would be up to your department heads should they authorize that. But much like we do for our staff, I'm here today to recognize you because you are a valuable member of our organization. Um, whether you're law enforcement, fire department, or EMS, we're all here to provide the same care. And on this day, and as you do is most probably every day you come to work, it was exceptional care. The outcome was incredible as you see the fruit of your labor. So thank you all. Thank you all for your commitment, your dedication, and your care. Oh. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Nathan. Yes, sir. Guys, first responders, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Anybody else like to speak? We're good. Not, I'm not to you yet. <laughs> um, under communications from the mayor, I only have one thing. <clears throat> one thing, um, if you all know, one thing I, I get to do, one of the things I get to do is um, suggest you all about the Grand Marshal for the Christmas parade. You're looking at me like, can I be doing it? <laughs> um, well, well I, get, I get some assistance sometimes. <laughs> but um, I talked to a few of you guys, and I think this is, this is a no-brainer. And I'm very proud to, um, to ask for you all's um, approval for John Gamble to be the Grand Marshal for this Christmas parade. Um, he served decades in this community and he's um, had such a good uh, positive impact on a lot of families here. I think it's just, uh, again, it's a no-brainer. So I uh, hear a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and second. You further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Committee reports. See school board report. Kelly. <clears throat> I don't know that Clinton City Schools can measure up to what we just we just saw. That was very heartwarming. But a few things that are going on in Clinton City Schools is we did have our Clinton 5K on Saturday down under the Green Bridge. That is an Education Foundation sponsored <laughs> event. And it was an amazing morning where we broke records. I think there was, um, if I'm not mistaken, 358, 359 registrations, which is up from about 295-ish last year. And so we broke a record and it was an amazing event. 
We did have, as you know, they run a one-mile race and a five-mile race. And so with the one-mile race, we did have some Clinton City students that actually took first place. Um, Adeline Queener um, was one of those. David Queener's granddaughter came in first place to the one-mile. Juan Castillo, out, uh, he's a sixth grader at Clinton Elementary School as well, won the boys. And then our very own Lydia Swanner came in second with the girls. So we um, had some good... Um, Good placements from Clinton City Schools, but all of the money that is raised towards that event goes towards health and wellness grants for Clinton City, Clinton City and Anderson County Schools. That includes physical health as well as mental and social assistance. So we look forward to being able to utilize some of that money for our students. A pancake breakfast is happening this Saturday at the Apple Blossom from 8 to 10 o'clock. We are very appreciative to Jimmy Taylor for sponsoring this annual pancake breakfast. All the proceeds will go to support the basketball program and associated activities, cheerleading, dance, winter guard, um, all, the other, um, all the other participants with our basketball program. Then wanted to let you know that um, our ET Stamey North Clinton Playground is still underway. We talked to the Miracle Playground vendor earlier this um, or early, earlier last week, and it's looking like all of our equipment will be in in December. So as soon as that equipment arrives, we will be putting that playground playground together. And then Scott Ray was not able to be with you tonight, so um, I am bringing you our um, second budget amendment. This is a smaller budget amendment. This only deals with our federal projects, but when we do our initial budget, we have allocations and those allocations change over the summer once the budget is approved. So these were our final allocations that came in and we wanted to get the budget in line with what those federal allocations were actually going to be. So we need to get that approved on your behalf. Here a motion for approval of budget num uh, amendment number two. Motion approved. Second. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Budget amendment number two passes. And thank you. And Blaze does have a home game tonight and Thursday night if you're looking for some fabulous entertainment. <laughs> thank you. Clinton Regional Planning Commission report. Vice Mayor Gann. The. Clinton Regional Planning Commission met on October the 9th. Uh, there was no business for the Board of Zoning and Appeals. Uh, the Planning Commission had two items of unfinished business. Uh, applicant Mary Hansen requesting final plat review and approval for property located at 250 Wellwood Lane. Uh, there were some corrections and additions that had to be made, and these were made so it was approved. An applicant, Alex Hamilton, requesting final plat review and approval for property located at 318 Lee Road. And again, this needed some corrections and everything from last month. So those had been made and it was approved. You may see there on your, uh, on your guidance that there's a consent agenda, which is the new thing that we're doing. If it's a matter of simply redividing property, our uh, services people are, are basically handling that and giving it to us for consent as a group so that we don't take up quite as much time in meetings and everything so these anytime we have the consent agenda it's it's a very simple matter of redividing subdividing and they've already reviewed it and found it acceptable so it's it's kind of a an ongoing thing for us and then new business amendment proposal to remove zoning section this was a matter of uh, some amendments that we are making in, in uh, reconstructing some of the zoning and some of the dates and times and everything. And I would assume we're probably going to be voting on those later. Next, yes, next, next, month. next month. So you have them there. These are primarily uh, being more restrictive about some of the things that we're going to allow. We changed some of the wording in some of it. And we've changed the biggest thing, I think, probably is changed some timing so that uh, there's a better better timing between the time they submit and when everything has to be in because we've been dealing with the fact that okay we submitted it and then it's still trickling in various approvals and such uh, and that's one of the things that we're trying to eliminate so that they can get it in on time we our staff can look at it and, and make approval or our rejection and we can move on and be clear-headed rather than coming to the meeting and saying well you still got this to do and you still got that to do so uh, that that will be some changes in the in the zoning ordinances. 
that we're going to be looking at. And, this, and that will probably be going on for the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll I mean, have four or five every time going in. Staff and I met Thursday, and what, what we kind of looked at is, is, is not to, to rush, but not to rush. We kind of said probably every other month we will bring something to council. Uh, this one we will bring in November. We're working on some stuff with the nuisance ordinance and some of the property maintenance. Uh, got into some pretty good details. I think we're about 26 pages long, so we, we're going to take that to Planning Commission in, in November, right, Bill? Give you all a copy of it in the December meeting, then probably bring that in January to, to vote on and change. And kind of do it that way. That way everybody gets a month to review it before we bring it to vote on. So we'll probably try to bring something about every other month for a while to, to make some of these changes that we've talked about for several years. The administrative hearing officer is something that we're wanting to go to. Uh, we'll, we'll take a lot of these property maintenance issues to, to the administrative hearing officer instead of the city judge. Uh, so we'll have to put that into place. So, so it's, it's going to be a lengthy process, but, but I think we finally got started and, and have got it going. You know, let me change my, what I said. It's going to be the next 24 to 36 months. <laughs> so, yeah, this, the, the it, it, we haven't made these changes in a number of years, and this yeah. is trying to clean up and streamline and try to get some things geared up. And I'm trying to remember, Roger, we have other business here, the Anderson County Text Amendment. And I'm trying to remember we have to unify with Anderson County on on something there, as I remember. I think that's right. Um, Bill, do you remember? Yeah, I think for the parts of their jurisdiction that are still within the planning region, we have to concur with changes they make, and this was one of them. They made an amendment to one of their zoning sections. Yeah, that's what. So we had to, we had to unify with Anderson County on that, and that was approved by the Planning Commission. Any questions, Jim? I've got something. I, of course, being from Morristown, and still go there and look at the paper uh, at my mom's. And I noticed this the other day, and I'm just going to read a little bit what was in their paper. And I don't know if these are some things that we ought to look at. I thought about it. But anyway, it talks about public hearings, but it says also passed at first reading was the proposed gateway overlay district on South Cumberland. Now, y'all don't know anything about South Cumberland. That's where I kind of grew up. And that's one of the main thoroughfares in the Morristown. If you talked about east, west, south, north, that would probably be from the south side. That's one of the main four lanes. And I'm going to take my glasses off because it didn't take a very good picture. Uh, from Morris Boulevard to Highway 160, <coughs> this district also includes the down development at exit 8 of I-81. Development in these corridors must be have meet more stringent regulations such as building facades being 40% brick or stone. Land use within these corridors exclude junkyards, building material yards, and automobile repair as principal use. The city has obtained a $20 million grant to improve South Cumberland Street, blah, blah, blah. My question is, and what I thought about, when you see an overlay like that, I mean, is that something that we might need to look at in the future as you come into our city, as you come in from the let's say the South Clinton area. I mean, do a, what I, I guess you can do, and I don't know, y'all know this better than I do, but you can have a, 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 an overlay of that area that says that you know, this, you, I guess it means you don't have to go back and redefine all your building codes and all your zoning ordinances, except in this overlay. I guess we have a historic downtown overlay, mm -hmm. and that historic downtown overlay is specific to that specific area. But as we're looking at rezoning things, I mean, it's always bugged me from the beginning that this dollar store down here has got its dumpster, dumpster sitting beside of it. I'm sorry, that bugs me. Uh, I think that dumpsters and things like that ought to be behind. And so much brick, I mean, you've got you know prefab metal buildings that these developers turn into retail spaces and so forth. So does this make sense to look at things like this and at least maybe venture out that way and look at a a gateway corridor, if we want to call it, and have more redefined. Some of that is is covered in our zoning. Some of those things, and I, one of the things that we've been discussing is appearance. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, and and trying to figure out okay, what can we put in there, and how can we word it in such a way that uh, you pull into the back of Walmart up here, and you've got that Dollar Tree up there, and it's a prefab metal building, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you pull in, and oh wow. You know, well, it's a shopping center. I mean, could could we not put something where there has to be so much brick? Well, yeah, we and I've talked to Matt, and we've talked to Matt. Um, I just talked to him specific, 
specifically last week, asked him if he can do that, and he was saying, and again, I don't totally understand, you know, word for word on this, but said we can, yeah, we can do that, but when you see the effects of that, which I agree with personally, you really don't start seeing it until 15, 20 years down the road, because things change. You know, you really can't change what's there now, but as things change over time, then they're under that new that new zoning, so okay. to speak. So yeah, I don't. I think we've gone past the metal buildings and, and exactly the buildings you're talking about to have a, a different exterior. And he said we can do that, and he's working on that. So this will be one of the amendments Good. we'll bring up hopefully in the next few months. I mean, again, dump, dumpsters and things that yeah. should be. But the gateway things we never talked about, but that's something we could certainly look into. I can the staff. I can tell you in, in discussions of things that have been brought before us, almost always there's a discussion of what's this going to look like. What are you going to What's, what's the front of it going to look like? What are we going to show the public? Right. Uh, you know, and, and one example that I would give, and, and we can talk about this, the storage place out uh, across from Mirror Point going toward Oak Ridge. Okay. Uh, we encouraged, even though we really had no probably legal way to make them do it, we encouraged them to put in chain link fence with blinders. And if you've been by there, you notice they've done an excellent job of putting in chain link fence with blinders. But if we had a corridor type overlay mm -hmm. of a particular area, in that corridor overlay, could you not specify that it has to have a barrier type fence? We probably could. Things like that. I mean, again, just pick out some strategic places. And it, and, and it and, may be. And look into this. Well, and it may be a matter of, you know, down the road where it's having its effect as, mm -hmm. as Mayor mentioned. I mean, downtown, I mean, again, I don't, and I'm not saying this yet, but downtown, they can tell you what color to paint different things <laughs> and what kind of, and I think that's fine. I'm not against that. But we need to have some outside of downtown as well. Yeah. Maybe not as stringent. Yeah. Well, I think everything you're talking about, about specifically talking about the corridors is, is really what things we're, are we're, be we're bringing because we're now, now we have the flexibility with this being separate but, you know, throughout this clarification okay. process. That we can start bringing things up and updating, and everything that we've talked about in the past, we can start incorporating it in, in this change. So and I think staff, it's a good thing. And staff can help us. Oh, with absolutely. Oh, they're the I one mean, driving. They're, they're, they're driving. Yeah, yeah. they're doing an excellent yes. job. Of yeah. Okay. Of and that's one reason we'll bring the, the property maintenance in December. Yeah. Since it's a day meeting, match will come to that meeting. Okay. And, we've, we've, uh, and, and that's why I wanted to good. do it then. Okay. So we're doing it piece piece by piece. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions for Vice Mayor Gann? You got anything else? No, I Thanks, Larry. Um, Clayton, you did utilities report, Councilman McBride. Uh, you can see in your packet, I think last month where we did not have a uh, report, and this month we have last month's and this month's. But uh, you may or may not know, but Dudley Fagan is retired as the accountant there, controller, whatever his chief of finance, whatever his title was. Uh, but his uh, son, <coughs> Dustin, uh, is his replacement. I'm going to read something here from our general manager. Uh, Dustin is a graduate of UT with a BS degree in accounting and a master's in accounting. Uh, five years he was with Lenore City Utilities as accounting supervisor and then the last six years he's been manager of accounting and finance at Harriman Utilities. But he started work I think a week ago today. Uh, but other than your report and that I don't have anything else. Any questions for Jim? Thanks, Jim. You got any other committee reports? Yeah. <coughs> Catherine's not here, so we'll move on from the other committee reports. General Government Report, Mr. Houck. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of things. Um, our J.C. Park Swimming Pool Renovation Project, we opened bids last Thursday, October 19th at 2 p.m. Um, bids came in somewhat over budget. Right now, kind of the process we're in, our architects actually evaluating all the, the bids. We were hoping to get something back today, but I knew they had asked for some supplementary information on the bids. One of the contractors, one of the local contractors, didn't send that information in until late this afternoon, so that's why we hadn't got anything. Kind of the process is now uh, two things. Once, once they finish evaluating them, as soon as we get them, we have to send them to TDEC. They'll have a seven-day turnaround to get them back to us, but they have to approve our procurement procedures, make sure that we did everything right. That's a new new thing with the state. Used to, they would just say, use your local procurement procedures, and they were good with it. Now they want to approve all of that, so that's another step that we have to go through, but it's a seven-day turnaround. So as soon as we get that, we'll post it on their portal. Seven days, we'll get that back. Hopefully, we'll get it tomorrow or Wednesday. So that's one step. Second step, 
We know we will be over budget, so we've done ask the state. I was already in conversation with them. The way all bids have been coming in here lately, everything's been coming in over budget. So I'd already had the conversation with TDEC about if that happened. Uh, was there a possibility to ask them for more funds? They said, yes, it was. So I was already on the phone with them Thursday afternoon, 30 minutes after we, we opened the budget, asking if we could do a budget amendment. They recommended that we ask for more money than we need, just in case we have something else happen. So when we, what I'd like to do is go ahead and set a special call meeting for next Thursday, um, November the 2nd. A convenient time for you all, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, because really all we need to do is do a, a budget amendment and also hopefully approve uh, and award the bids. If for some reason we don't have this done, I will just send out a notice and cancel the meeting that day and set one for early the next week. Everybody good with Thursday? What what time what is time? good for you all? I'm fine with it. one or two. You'd be fine. One, one. 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 Wendy, you okay? Two. That's fine. As long as I can get a, uh, I, I, four I, I can't here. Make, I can't make one. I can do two. Can you do two? Two. 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 We'll do two. These retired people. <laughs> no. My wife already has me programmed right here. <laughs> so I don't need to make a motion on that? Yeah. Here, a motion for a spe special call meeting on November 2nd so at, two, at 2 p.m. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, finance report, Chris. Thank you, Roger. Well, believe it or not, we're a fourth of the way through our fiscal year. I know. As of the end of September. <laughs> Uh, revenues and expenditures are coming in as, as budgeted. Uh, you may notice that our sales tax doesn't reflect the, the latest um, local option. It, we just got the information today. I think it's because maybe our fourth Monday arrives so early in the month of October. So a lot of times I don't get that until the 20th to 25th of the month. But um, so besides that, revenues um, are, are coming in as expected. You may notice, and I don't know if it was in here last month, that the purchase of our fire truck kind of shows, you know, as a large expenditure that uh, that may draw your attention. But of course, that was budgeted and it was capital, so that was a good thing. Um, last month, I mentioned we'd have a budget amendment, the first one for the fiscal year. I ran into a little bit of health problems last week and didn't get that completed, so I apologize. We'll have a budget amendment next month, first one. And it's just kind of to clean up all of our capital purchases and things like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. I uh, also wanted to mention that we are two weeks into our auditors being on site. Everything seems to be going pretty well. Um, so, so far so good. Nothing, nothing uh, negative to note there. So, any you got questions, any questions? For Chris? Chris, we usually get the monthly numbers. Are they just running the late sales tax? Uh -huh. So the sales tax is. Um, I probably should have placed last month's on this month's just so you'd have it, but it's not updated because we didn't get those numbers yet. Okay. But I can tell you, I did get the email today that Gina forwards me from the from the county with the number. So obviously about three o'clock, I didn't have time to get on the agenda. But the the uh, local option was once again very good. It was it was in line with where we've been trending all along. So it was over. Four hundred thousand as the city's portion, uh, four fifty or so. So, great. great. Any questions for Chris? Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, Trinity Benefit Advisors presented renewals with a zero percent increase on health insurance. There is a nineteen hundred and thirty-five dollar annual increase in Vision Plan due to an enhancement to eyeglass frame benefit by $50 with it in lieu of frames that contact lenses have been fit increased by $50. Based on these factors, we recommend the following for the 2024 plan increase. Blue Cross Blue Shield with a zero premium increase. Current premium S Network with a zero premium increase. Employee premium P Network increase or network with a single uh, employee plan for sixty-one fifty-seven and family for one hundred and fifty-eight dollars and forty-two cents. That's what the employee pays if they want to change the P plan. <coughs> Delta Dental 
no plan change, no premium increase. Superior vision is the one I just talked about for the, the glasses and um, contacts. Mutual of Omaha Life Insurance, no plan change and no premium increase. And I think this is the first time I can ever remember that we didn't have an increase in our health insurance. What you benefit, I'll try to beat you out a second. I was about to say, we've probably been paying too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hear that. Well, Hear I, that. I know, and, and that's part of it. We've, we've had to argue with several, for several employees um, it's a with mess. them this year on coverage. Um, it's a mess. I mean, so and you all need to tell employees, I guess they know, and watch them like a hawk. It's Because uh, they'll, they'll jack you around. Yep. And it, the total premiums are 1.8. Million is that right, Roger? I think that's right. I think I think it's what it was we paid last year, Chris. You know, it was about one point eight last year total. Yes. And we so pay that. Right. We pay all of that. That's a yes. We pay one hundred percent unless they do the P plan, yeah. P net work, which the employee pays that well, minimum amount. What's our our nor our budget's about fourteen million? Is that right for the? The overall uh, budget, general fund yeah. budget. It's just, that's 12 percent of our oh, operating budget going for benefit. health insurance. That's a and, tremendous and that's what I tell benefit. It's a great benefit. Yeah, and it's it's if they don't deny us the employee, it, it's a cataract plan if you if you yeah. get the coverage because I think out of pocket, uh, individual out of pockets around twenty three hundred and fifty dollars that you pay out of pocket annually, which is really low. Yeah, it's a good tool. So do we need to approve this? Yes. <coughs> so Make moved. a motion to approve. So moved. Move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the only other thing I've got, and we didn't have it on my report, but I thought about it earlier today, I'd like for JB to talk about his um, <laughs> Halloween party at the community center this coming Sunday. Sunday, 2 5. Please use the microphone, <laughs> JB. 101 South Dick Street. Jason some brown. <laughs> uh, two to five Sunday. Um, I think we've got about the same amount of people setting up as we had last year. I don't have Taylor. She's off on maternity leave right now. So me and Amanda have been trying to do everything, get everything in order. Um, I think we got three food trucks, backyard bouncers, and it looks like the weather's going to be good. Um, battle axe throw and then little ponderosa. So we'll have the stuff that we've been having and we're going to try to reroute it through the center a little bit different and keep people off the sidewalks and stuff. So I think it'll be a good event. Event photo will be there taking pictures too. So it'll be pretty neat. Two to five. Two to five. Two to five. Great. Any questions for Roger? I've got one more. Hey, Roger, we talked about uh, Boomer Effect. You sent us some uh, things to look at for speed humps. Yes. Are we going to go back and visit that eventually? We can right now. We have not passed, as you all know, we've not passed a policy on it. It's really up to council if we decide we want to pass a, pol a policy. I've had a couple other requests on one, maybe two streets, I think. Um, it's really if we want to pass a policy or not on it. I thought we, we didn't pass anything? No. no. No, they sent a couple things for us to look at, some policies yeah. to look at. I think Knoxville Cities was yeah. better maybe than Knox mm -hmm. County Fair. policy, I yeah. think. I think we ought to have some sort of policy. Yeah, I do. I'm with you. I've been questioning about that. I thought the reason was if they had a request and whatever street was affected by that, have vote some way and it's over 50%, they get it. If it's not, they don't. It's right. 70%. That was, right. We just that talked was, about it. We just workshop. talked about it. But we didn't actually do it. We didn't actually do it. That was actually in a workshop, I think, right? We can, right. We can try over the next month or two to to put that together and yeah. uh, I think we need a formal policy if we want to do it. And are we going to do with anything with the bump, the speed bumps or humps that are there? That I think are, one, of those, one of those policies talked about go back and mm -hmm. apply the same, whatever policy you adopt, apply that same policy to the current <coughs> speed humps. Speed that. To do the same logic. To it, do the same logic. Right. Yes. Yeah. I've had a couple yeah. people ask me about that. Yeah. I, I do same think that would, I think that, that would be so. the way to do it. To whatever logic we pick, I'm go back and whatever you all want to do on it. I think it'd be good to have a policy personally. I agree. And Could I we, we bring those? Because I think those two policies you presented <coughs> to us the last time, I think those are good. <coughs> let's pick one of them. <coughs> one of them, or not unless somebody got something better. I think it was the one that with that, you know, if the neighborhood wanted it, we put it off. Well, we didn't put it off. We had the, the person requesting it had to get. 
50% of greater of the neighborhood. It's a neighborhood thing. Bill, Bill was going to go by and get signatures. Yeah, somebody oh, take pictures. Yeah, we're going to let Bill do it. Bill, man. We'll get that file back out and we'll put something together and present it next month. All in favor? <laughs> hey, one other question. And I'm getting bombarded with this. I used to sit back there with Kelly Johnson and she tried to keep me straight. <sighs> And we, I'd always, we'd always chit chat back and forth with Jim or Zach, going to bring up about Magna Mills property, and they brought it up at every council meeting. So this is my pet peeve right now. And it looks, Magna Mills saw it looks pretty good, just to be honest with you. You did good, you did a good job. It's mowed and everything right now. But the house on Riverside at 415, codes got to step up. We can't just move a ladder and nail a board up, and that be sufficient. There's got to be something in our codes that these people have got to finish this house, and it's got to get finished. So get ready. David Quinter's going to bring it up at every meeting until we get something done. The, the, this house looks horrible. The nuisance, not nuisance, property and maintenance ordinance that we're getting ready to strengthen yes. will help that quite a bit. Well, let's, Riverside. I'm that's what we'll be presenting to Planning Commission in November, and then bring it to you all. Well, it needs to be done. This We have went a lot. These people... I've had long enough, and it's time to move on. Hey, it's time to finish the house. One yes. thing I, I think what Roger was saying too, I think it'd be a good conversation to have with Matt and Code and say, because hey, I think sometimes, you know, I've, I've asked a lot of questions, and it's really we just don't have a good code or, or zoning around that. Maybe ask Mass, and this is the issue here. What can we do to pass some amendments I'll to make more, to get, the, get that I'll more? more, more but I think, that, but I think that's the way to go well, on that. Look, said you'll get this new one, and, and I got it for the first time last. Week two weeks ago yeah. and read it. It it it, it gives. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Detail. Well, uh, no, I'm I'm for all for doing yeah. whatever. It's just time we. Yeah. It's just time yeah. something yeah. needs yeah. to be done. Well, we well, we went long enough. Some other properties okay. on Eagle Bend and some other things. Yeah. That gives, yeah. It gives a little more detail on what yeah. they can enforce and how they can do it. It's just time we do yeah. something with yeah. the property. We even had the conversation on just vehicles on private property that give us the right that we could tow them even. I'm for that too. Yeah. So I mean, that's some of the changes that we're looking at. Yeah. If we could just address well, that, I think I'd appreciate Magda it. Mills taught us that uh, if somebody's not wanting to do the right thing and wanting to play the system, they can go on for years <laughs> without getting something, having to do anything. And I think maybe our code today, and Bill can straighten me out on this if I'm speaking wrong, and which he will. I think if they go down and make some attempt to do something, that buys them another six months. Mm -hmm. Well, moving a ladder and nailing a board up to me is not sufficient. So as Jim used to say, let's get them in court and get them in front of the judge. And that's what they did in Magna Mills, and I'm just following suit from him. Yeah. That's just what I think. Sorry. Thank you. And it'll put a little bit more teeth that the city judge doesn't have the authority to do, but the administrative hearing officer yeah, can't, and he can get in their pocket. That's okay. good. So, well, so that's what, that's what we're looking at. We can often file X amount of dollars per day, kind of like we did the mill. Yeah, because we did, if you remember, we did the mill to put an administrative hearing officer, yeah. not the city judge. And, and the thing that is, in today's environment, people just don't take care of things. I mean, you have to administrate, you know, picking up sticks out of your yard and things. I mean, just that it, it's your different generations and different thoughts and people work differently and I mean parking in your front yard that's full of mud holes and then getting the mud on the street when you pull out in the street and you see that happening I mean, and, and that's something else we talk about if we go through this process we'll probably have to hire, hire a collecting agency go for to be able to collect because otherwise we just too. put this fine on them and, and they don't pay it Pass you know, we got lucky with the bank of mills that they they cut us the check that we thought we'd never get has no teeth. We don't so, go get it. So if we don't collect it. Maybe if we don't get that part of it. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. I think, you know, speaking for planning commission and council and staff, I think we're all in yeah. align yeah. with that. We just got to yes, get, get it through. I'm in agreement with you. And we, and we will do, I think, what we can to help staff do what they yeah, need to do. Exactly. So when you got to hire that collection agency, you let us know. That's right. Um, Anything else for Roger? And I so, have one more question. Sorry, go um, going back to kind of the speed bump situation, <laughs> but not really speed bumps. Had we looked back into that lower part of Eagle Bend where they're having trouble with the plant traffic driving really fast when they get off, did you ever find out the data on that? Did you no, pull that off yet? No, I wasn't able to yet. No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. 
But you're going to bring us something next meeting or the next about some sort of proposal for the speed humps? We should be able to. Yeah. Any update on traffic lights up at oh, 122? Yeah. They were in the process of making the communications last week. I know it's, it's been an ongoing issue. As of Wednesday last week, they had two pieces that still needed to come in to connect the fiber optic cables. All the uh, programming is being done, and hopefully in the next week or so we'll be able to activate them on caution, but we're closer. It's just get supply chain. Duct, get a roll of duct tape. <laughs> it has been a while. Um, anything else, Roger? We need to do the resolution for the <clears throat> Is this, I'm going to it's, it's under a resolution okay. <clears throat> on that. Anything else for Roger? Thanks, Roger. There's no ordinances. Um, this meeting um, adoption of resolutions have resolution number 833 this is the TDOT slash TAP grant programs assurance of compliance with the TDOT local government guidelines for the management of federal and state funded transportation projects do you hear a motion for approval so moved second motion is second any further discussion Roger you'd like to give us a summary on that just, just an additional requirement on the TAP grant that uh, in a meeting we were or I, Bill actually did it. I was at the Arbor Day um, ceremony Friday, so Bill sat in on the meeting with with our engineering firm and TDOT, but this is a new new resolution, new procedure that they put on the TAP grant that we had to pass. Just one more red tape. In, in questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution number 833 passes. Any old business before us? Any new business? Your motion to adjourn? Move. Means adjourn. <laughs>